ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम ऑल टू टूडेज रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत वे रीडिंग फ्रॉम आदि लीला चैप्टर फाइव एंड वील बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्लोक टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी वन मुखम करोतिम पंगुम लंकते गिरी यद कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारीणम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरि ओम तत्सत टुडे इज ऑल्सो श्री नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर अपियरेंस डे हु हैज रिटन सो मेनी ब्यूटिफुल वैष्णव सॉन्ग्स was the son of Jiva Goswami. Verse 221, Chapter 5 from Chaitanya Charitamrit Adilila. Lord Brahma sitting on his lotus seat in his own abode always meditates on him and worships him with the mantra consisting of 18 syllables. Purport. In his own planet, Brahma with the inhabitants of that planet worships the form of Lord Govinda Krishna by the mantra of 18 syllables, Klim Krishnaya Govindaya Gopi Janavallabhaya Swaha. Those who are initiated by a bona fide spiritual master and who chant the Gayatri Mantra three times a day know this Ashta Dashakshara, that is 18 syllable mantra, the inhabitants of Brahmaloka and the planets below Brahmalok worship Lord Govinda by meditating with this mantra. There is no difference between meditating and chanting, but in the present age, meditation is not possible on this planet. Therefore, loud chanting of mantra like the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, with soft chanting of the Ashtad, the Shakshara, the mantra of 18 syllables, is recommended. Maha Mantra is the 16 syllable mantra and the one which we said earlier which uh, Lord Brahma and the inhabitants the mantra they worship with it's called the Ashta the Shakshara mantra Klim Krishnaya Govindaya Gopi Pallabhaya Swaha Lord Brahma lives in the highest planetary system known as the Brahma Lok or Satya Lok in every planet there is a predominating deity as the predominating deity in Satya Lok is Lord Brahma so in the heavenly planets, Indra is the predominating deity. And on the sun, the sun god, Vivaswan, is the predominating deity. The inhabitants and predominating deities of every planet are all recommended to worship Govinda either by meditation or by chanting. I'll repeat, the inhabitants and predominating deities of every planet are all recommended to worship Govinda either by meditation or by chanting. Verse 222 Everyone in the 14 worlds meditates upon him and all the denizens of Vaikuntha sing of his qualities and pastimes. Verse 223 The goddess of fortune is attracted by his sweetness which Srila Rupa Goswami has described in this way. But Srila Rupa Goswami in his Lagu Bhagavata Amrita has quoted from the Padma Puran where it is stated that Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, after seeing the attractive features of Lord Krishna, was attracted to him. And to get the favor of Lord Krishna, she engaged herself in meditation. When asked by Krishna why she engaged in meditation with austerity, Lakshmi Devi answered, I want to be one of your associates like the gopis in Vrindavan. Hearing this, Lord Shri Krishna replied that it was quite impossible. Lakshmi Devi then said that she wanted to remain just like a golden line on the chest of the Lord. The Lord granted the request and since then, Lakshmi has always been situated on the chest of Lord Krishna as a golden line. The austerity and meditation of Lakshmi Devi are also ma mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 16th chapter, verse 36, where the Nagapatanis, the wives of the serpent Kaliya, in the course of their prayers to Krishna, said that the goddess of fortune Lakshmi also wanted his association as a gopi and desired the dust of his lotus feet. 
Verse 224, my dear friend, if you are indeed attached to your worldly friends, do not look at the smiling face of Lord Govinda as he stands on the bank of the Yamuna at Keshighat. Casting side long glances, he places his flute to his lips, which seem like newly blossomed twigs. His transcendental body bending in three places appears very bright in the moonlight. Purport. This is a verse quoted from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.239 in connection with the practical devotional service. Generally, people in their conditioned life engage in the pleasure of society, friendship and love. This so-called love is lust, not love. But people are satisfied with such a false understanding of love. Vidyapati, a great and learned poet of Mithila, has said that the pleasure derived from friendship, society and family life in the material world is like a drop of water. But our heart desire pleasure like an ocean. Thus the heart is compared to a desert of material existence that requires the water of an ocean of pleasure to satisfy its dryness. If there is a drop of water in the desert, one may indeed say that it is water. But such a minute quantity of water has no value. Similarly, in this material world, no one is satisfied in the dealings of society, friendship and love. Therefore, if one wants to derive real pleasure within his heart, he must seek the lotus feet of Govinda. In this verse, Rupa Goswami indicates that if one wants to be satisfied in the pleasure of society, friendship and love, he need not seek shelter at the lotus feet of Govinda. For if one takes shelter under his lotus feet, he will forget that minute quantity of so-called pleasure. One who is not satisfied with the so-called pleasure may seek the lotus feet of Govinda, who stands on the shore of the Yamuna at Keshi Tirth or Keshi Ghat in Vrindavan and attracts all the gopis to his transcendental loving service. Verse 225, without a doubt, he is directly the son of the king of Raja. Only a fool considers him a statue. Verse 226, for that offense, he cannot be liberated. Rather, he will fall into the terrible hellish condition. What more should I say? Purport. In his Bhakti Rasam Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami has stated that those who are actually very serious about devotional service do not differentiate between the form of the Lord made of clay, metal, stone or wood and the original form of the Lord. In the material world, a person and his photograph, picture or statue are different. But the statue of Lord Krishna and Krishna himself, the supreme personality of Godhead, are not different. Because the Lord is absolute. What we call stone Wood and metal are energies of the Supreme Lord, and energies are never separate from the energetic. As we have several times explained, no one can separate the sunshine energy from the energetic sun. Therefore, material energy may appear separate from the Lord, but transcendentally it is non different from the Lord. The Lord can appear anywhere and everywhere because his diverse energies are distributed everywhere like sunshine. We should therefore understand whatever we see to be the energy of the Supreme Lord and should not differentiate between the Lord and his archa form made from clay, metal, wood or paint. Even if one has not developed this consciousness, one should accept it theoretically from the instructions of the spiritual master and should worship the archa murti or the form of the Lord in the temple as non-different from the Lord. The Padma Quran specifically mentions that anyone who thinks the form of the Lord in the temple to be made of wood, stone or metal is certainly in a hellish condition. Impersonalists are against the worship of the Lord's form in the temple and there is even a group of people who pass it but condemn such worship. This has no meaning. For all the Acharyas, even the impersonalists, Shankar Acharya have recommended the worship of the transcendental form of the Lord. Impersonists like Shankaracharya recommended the worship of five forms known as Panchapasana, which include Lord Vishnu, Vaishnavas. However, the worship the forms of the Lord Vishnu in his varied 
manifestations such as Radha Krishna, Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram and Rukmini Krishna. Mayavadis admit that worship of the Lord's form is required in the beginning but they think that in the end everything is impersonal. Therefore, since they are ultimately against the worship of the Lord's form, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has described them as offenders. Srimad Bhagavatam has condemned those who think the body to be self as Bhama Ijyadhir. Bhama means earth and Ijyadhir means worship, worshipper. There are two kinds of Bhama Ijyadhir, who, those who worship the land of their birth, such as nationalists, those who make sacrifices for the motherland, motherland and those who condemn the worship of the form of the Lord. One should not worship the planet earth or land of his birth, nor should one condemn the form of the Lord, which is manifested in metal or wood or for, for our facility. Material things are also the energy of the Supreme Lord. Verse 227, Therefore, who can describe the mercy of the lotus feet of him, Lord Nityananda, by whom I have attained the shelter of this Lord Govinda? Verse 228, All the groups of Vaishnavas who live in Vrindavan are absorbed in chanting the all auspicious name of Krishna. Verse 229, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are the life and soul of those Vaishnavas who do not know anything but devotional service to Sri Sri Radha Krishna. Verse 230, The dust and shade of the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas have been granted to this fallen soul by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Verse 231, Lord Nityananda said, In Vrindavan all things are possible. Here I have explained his brief statement in detail. Verse 232, I have attained all this by coming to Vrindavan and this was ma made possible by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Purport, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan are Vaishnavas. They are all auspicious because somehow or other they always chant the holy name of Krishna, even though some of them do not strictly follow the rules and regulations of devotional service. On the whole, they are devotees of Krishna and chant his name directly or indirectly. Purposely or without purpose, even when they pass on the street, they are fortunate enough to exchange greetings by then saying the name of Radha or Krishna. Thus, directly or indirectly, they are auspicious. The present city of Vrindavan has been established by the Gaudiya Vaishnav since the six Swamis, Goswamis went there and directed the construction of the different temples. Of all the temples in Vrindavan, 90% belong to the Gaudiya Vaishnav sect, the followers of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, and seven temples are very famous. The inhabitants of Vrindavan do not know anything but the worship of Radha and Krishna, in recent years, some unscrupulous so-called priests known as caste Goswamis have introduced the worship of demigods privately, but no genuine and rigid Vaishnavas participate in this. Those who are serious about the Vaishnav method of devotional activities do not take part in such worship of demigods. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas never differentiate between Radha Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. They say that since Lord Chaitanya is the combined form of Radha Krishna. He is not different from Radha and Krishna. But some misled people try to prove that they are greatly elevated by saying that they like to chant the holy name of Lord Gauda instead of the names of Radha and Krishna. Thus they purposely differentiate between Lord Chaitanya and Radha Krishna. According to them, the system of Nadia Nagari which they have recently invented in their fertile brains is the worship of Gora, Lord Chaitanya. But they do not like to worship Radha and Krishna. They put forward the argument that since Lord Chaitanya himself appeared as Radha and Krishna combined, there is no necessity of worshipping Radha and Krishna. Such differentiation by so-called devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is considered disruptive by pure devotees. Anyone who differentiates between Radha Krishna and Goranga is to be considered a plaything in the hands of Maya. There are others who are against the worship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, thinking him mundane. But any sect that differentiates between Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha Krishna, either by worshipping Radha Krishna as distinct from Lord Chaitanya or by worshipping Lord Chaitanya but not Radha Krishna, is in the group of Prakrita 
सहज यस श्रीला कृष्णदास कबीराज गोस्वामी द ऑथर ऑफ श्री चैतन्य चरिता में प्रिडिक्ट इन वर्स वर्सेज टू हंड्रेड एंड इन द फ्यूचर दोस्त को मैनुफैक्चर इमेजिनरी मेथड्स ऑफ वर्शिप will gradually give up the worship of radha krishna and although they will all call themselves devotees of lord chaitanya they will also give up the worship of chaitanya mahaprabhu and fall into the material activities for the real worshipers of lord chaitanya the ultimate goal of life is to worship shri shri radha and shri krishna verse 233 i have described my own story without reservations the attributes of lord nityananda making me like a madman forced me to write these things verse 234 the glories of lord nityananda's transcendental attributes are unfathomable even lord shesh with his thousands of mouths cannot find their limit verse 235 praying at the lotus feet of shri shri roop and shri ragunath always desiring their mercy i krishna das narrate shri chaitanya charitamrit following in their footsteps thus end the bhakti vedant purpose to shri chaitanya charitamrita adi lila fifth chapter describing the glories of lord nityananda balram so the last verse of this chapter chapter 5 to 35 is shri roop and ragunath pade yara asha chaitanya charitamrit kahe krishna thank you for joining we'll continue next time at the beginning chapter 6 of the adhilila the glories of shri advaita acharya hari om tat sat hari krishna